This video is about yak tracks and if you watch the entire video you'll know whether the yak tracks walker or yak tracks pro is best for you or even if yak tracks is the best choice for an ice traction device depending on your situation. Traction devices fall into three basic categories. The most common are spiked ice traction devices. Uh, there, is, there are some, a very few, that have a grit material on the bottom and those are basically used in industry in special circumstances where anti-sparking is important. The third kind are spikeless ice cleats and that's the category that yak tracks fall into. And essentially the way they work is they work like tire chains for your car. Another thing I want to emphasize with yak tracks is that they are for ice and packed snow. They are do nothing in deep snow. This is the Yak Tracks Walker. It's the original Yak Tracks design. The stretch straps are made from an elastomer material that stay flexible down to a minus 41 degrees. The coils are hand wound stainless steel. They're 1.2 millimeter and they give you hundreds of biting edges that grip the ice in, uh, in all directions. So it, uh, I've been using them for years and they work very, very well. When you first get them, you wonder how they grip the ice because there really is nothing sharp. There's nothing sharp on them at all. But I assure you, they do, they do work very, very well. The Actrax Walker is designed for relatively light duty. You would put these on to walk to the mailbox, uh, walk from your car to your place of business to the grocery store. This is the Actrax Pro. And this is the one that I recommend for tougher ap applications like outdoor work, outdoor sports, outdoor exercise, walking, hiking on regular roads. Uh, people jog with them and uh, they work very well. It's the same skid lock system. It has the same system of straps and coils. The difference being is that the straps are real rubber. They're much stronger. They're very they're much uh, sturdier in the way they pull and the actual coils themselves are 1.4 millimeters because the main point of failure with yak tracks uh, is the the, uh, the coils wearing through the braiding and so the thicker coils are going to last longer so this is the one you want to get for tougher applications or if you live in an area where you're going to use them almost every day you definitely want to go with the Pro the Pro also has a performance strap it's a velcro strap that goes across the top that serves two two purposes it helps keep it in place if you're pushing side to side and more importantly for a lot of people is if you do have occasion to walk through deeper snow that uh, velcro strap will keep them on your shoes a little bit better and that's particularly true if you walk through deeper wet snow because the snow has a tendency to get in between and can can make them come off I've never really had that problem, but people have reported it. Now, if you don't want to use that Velcro strap, if you just want the heavier duty strap and that's enough for you, it is removable. You simply take it off here. Try to compare the Walker and the Pro next to each other. The uh, Pro is on the left, the Walker is on the right. It's a little bit difficult to see the difference in the thickness. But like if you look on the front of the the way they mount the Pro again on the left, the Walker on the right, the Pro is uh, more substantial in the way it mounts on the toe to keep it on a little bit better. Same thing is true of the way it mounts on the heel. Again, the for our comparison here to be consistent, the Pro is on the left and the Walker is on the right, and you can see the the Pro is far more substantial helps keep it on your shoe while you're running or going through deeper snow or working. Both the Actrax Pro and the Actrax Walker are going to give you exact same excellent traction on ice and packed snow. So when you're making your decision between the Actrax Walker and the Actrax Pro, make it based on durability. Um, and the other thing to consider, especially for older folks, if you have problems uh, stretching or holding on to things with your hands. Uh, you definitely want to go with the walker. 
even if it means replacing it more often because the uh, it's just not going to do you any good if you can't get it on your footwear so especially for older folks or anybody with any kind of physical incapacity where they have weakness in their hands uh, the Pro is just that much more difficult to put on because those real rubber straps are much stronger they're stronger and it helps stay on your shoe better uh, it's, it's what they're designed to do but again they don't do you any good if you can't use them I don't recommend either the Actrax Walker or the Actrax Pro for off-road applications and when I say off-road I'm not talking about going down to the park and running on the uh, jogging trail or something like that but rather uh, for example walking through the woods or through a field it's it's not what they're designed to do because the sticks and twigs and things and debris tend to get stuck in the in the coils and the other thing is that the coils themselves if you're walking over sharp surfaces or abrasive surfaces they're going to wear out faster I mean it's it's rubber and it's tough but it's still you can still cut it if, if you're stepping on something sharp so I have other ice cleats for off-road applications that are more applicable but the advantage again too is that with the spikeless design if you do fall and people do fall on ice I don't care what you're wearing there's nothing that's going to cut you or, or injure you that way they're very very practical very useful and in another video I'm going to show you just how how effective they are on the ice this video will show you how to put yak tracks on your shoes. Uh, first thing to remember when you look at your yak tracks, there is no left or right yak tracks. They're both the same. The front of the yak tracks has the word yak tracks on the front. On the heel tab, there's a logo. You simply take the your shoe. You would usually be sitting down, have your legs crossed, and you put the front of the yak tracks over the front of your shoe. Then you simply take the tab, pull it back over your heel, and you pull it up far enough so that heel tab is above that ridge between your sole and your shoe. Then you take the two side straps, pull them up over the side of your shoe so that they're above the sole. And that's how they go on. to it. There's one very important thing to remember when you wear yak tracks and that is that you must take them off when you go indoors and it's not because it's going to damage the floors in any way. The, the spikeless design is safe on most floors but the problem is is that the coil design for as well as that uh, grips ice and packs snow uh, it can become very very slippery on a dry smooth surface like the floor in the supermarket, uh, in the train station, uh, any you know anywhere. You you have to take them off before you go indoors, or you're going to fall inside instead of falling on the ice. The other thing is that you shouldn't drive wearing yak tracks, and the reason being is the way they're designed. When you go to move between pedals, you can get hung up on the strap. So it's definitely not recommended that you drive wearing yak tracks. There's other important safety considerations for people who live in cities. And it goes back to the same principle again where when you step off a curb, many times the sewer grate is not ice or snow covered. So again, you're going to have smooth metal against smooth metal contact and you can slip. Uh, the same thing is true if you're going on or off a bus. Uh, it can be, you have to be very careful on the steps that are often metal. Uh, you just, when you're in a city, you're constantly going in and out of doors, and that's something to consider. And if you're going to have yak tracks, you've got to be taking them off and putting them back on all the time. I do have other alternatives. I have a, a one kind of an ice traction device that you do not have to remove to go indoors, that you can drive with, and you just put them on and leave them on. They're a little more expensive, but if you live in a city or if you have some kind of uh, physical incapacity where you're not able to put them on and off, uh, you might want to consider those. And if you want to find out about those, you can give me a call. When you're picking the size 
of your yak tracks it's very important that you remember that yak tracks run small so if your shoe size is at the top of a shoe range or if you plan on wearing them on very heavy footwear uh, you might want to consider going up to the next larger size if you're in doubt go to the next larger size it's, it's very important another thing I wanted to mention to you is a reason to buy them from theperfectpresent.com uh, if you follow my sizing guidelines closely size exchanges are not all that common but if you do run into size exchanges I, I do handle my own size exchanges uh, I can do it a lot faster the M plus foot care people who uh, are, who manufacture yak tracks are very good people to deal with but I do do the size exchanges much faster I also handle my own warranty uh, work so instead of uh, seven to ten days in getting you back on the road or back in your yak tracks uh, the, the time is usually two or three days until you're back in business and that's important because once you've experienced the safety of walking on ice and snow with yak tracks you don't want to give them up and uh, one day is all it takes to, to have that accident so we try to take care of our customers and get them back in business as quickly as possible